Wallace playing Wolf Run Ramp. Can I call him J-Wall? You can. You can call him William Wallace if you want. <laughs> Braveheart. I'm going to call him Jack. I, I mean, it's, I think Braveheart's accurate. You know, to come into this tournament with Wolf Run. Very brave. Delver Very brave. Against all these Delver decks. So there's Josh Cho. So I got a, his recent top eight. I got a Wolf Run deck here. In Barcelona. I got seven Titans in this Wolf Run deck. Seven Titan Wolf Run. Four Prime, three Infernal. How many Wolves? Four Huntmasters. They're not Wolves yet. Soon. They may be Wolves. And I've got, it's, I mean, it's pretty standard. It's a little, if you guys are familiar with my deck list, it's a little bit different. Um, he's got an Acidic Slime. He's got a Viridian Emissary. His Green Suns in the four. Only two Green Suns. Um, two Batter Skulls. A Bonfire. Um, one, uh, excuse me, four Slag Storms. Three Pillar of the Flame. Stuff like that. Only 25 lands, uh, but he does have the Glimmer Post package. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, it looks like he's you. got three caverns in the board, which seems seems right. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's better to keep the, the caverns in the board than the main. Uh, he's got two beasts within there um, in the board. I don't see any main deck. No, no main deck for this tournament. Um, two Kessig Wolf runs in the main, none in the board. I know that was something that, um, that people were pointing out about how like Jerry T's list, for example, could Phantasmal Image, Titan, getting two Ghost Quarters and take out the Wolf Runs, and then you'd be out of Wolf Runs. So, Josh with an island, unglued island, right? Yeah. And while Joey talks about the game, I'll just give you guys an idea of Josh's deck list. Um, it's pretty standard um, deck list that you guys have seen from Jerry. Um, I actually don't think that Josh has changed the main deck card. He has, he has one he, extra angel. He has one extra Restoration Angel. Um, he has the two cavern souls like Todd has as well, and then it might be Todd's list. Yeah, it looks like no thought scours, an extra gut shot. Yeah, so this is something. Fourth probe. Yeah. If you guys saw the first match, it's pretty much the exact same deck list, and we'll go over it during the sideboard. But um, just to keep you guys up to speed on what's going on, turn two Sphere of the Suns for John, just ramping as he should. Turn three Geist of Saint Trap for Mr. Cho. Yeah. Here's Todd's list. I'm, you can take a look and compare it. And I'll do the play by play. Okay. Just to, just to compare. I'm pretty sure it's identical main deck. All right, John has a slag storm for the Geist. All right, one for one, just fine with that. Moreland Haunt for Josh. Passes back to John. Ink Moth Nexus. Looks like John wants to cast another. Okay, so he goes with ramp and broke. Another ramp spell. Resolves. Gets a forest. So John now at uh, will have Titan Mana next turn. I can't get a good look at John's hand, but um, it's got Glimmer Post in there. I did see that. I uh, believe there's an Acidic Slime in there. A second Rampant Growth from John, and that appears to resolve as well. The plan, is, the plan in game one, if you don't have Cavern in your deck, is to get to nine mana mm -hmm. so that you can play a Titan through a mana leaf. Right. That is the plan, and it looks as though he is attempting to execute that plan. Hopefully while not being under duress from a Delver player, so that you have enough time to do, to do that. Right. So far, so good then for John. Yeah, so, he's at so seven, far, definitely so good. Access to seven mana here. Bless you. Thank you. The actually only difference in their deck list, by the way, uh, they're 74 to 75, is that Josh has a fourth Phantasmal image in his sideboard, where Todd has a tomato Tem tomato. Tomato. Okay. So Josh flashes in the Restoration Angel at the end of John's turn, and now goes on the attack. So Angel Delver bringing the beast. This, this is exactly kind of the reason that I... Uh, had written this week that basically that Wolf Run is just a lot worse deck now in poorly position um, is because of Restoration Angel and you guys will be able to see that probably through this game we'll see how it plays out but the way that you know he can bend things his way and still leave all of his mana open and do what he wants to uh, while having a 3-4 flyer in play and having Mana League available is really powerful. Five mana. Slime Ball. Acidic Slime. John? 
attempts to take out Moreland Haunt. Moreland Haunt taps for mana. Which is standard. Another one. And looks like he's going to use it, actually. He says, yeah, you know what? The mana. I'll use that mana and three more. Cast a second Restoration Angel. And now John is on a three turn clock if he can't deal with those angels. And if Josh has a land, he's in. Oh. So, I thought Josh had a sword in his hand and a glacial fortress. I could be wrong. Oh, that would have been rough. Plays glacial fortress, does, does not have apparently have a sword, or at least didn't want to play it there. Yeah. So, uh, John now should, if he has a land, can play uh, Titan with Mana Leak backup. He can play Titan. Now, this is, you know, this is one of the things that I don't specifically like about Infernal Titan right now, and why I haven't played it is because doesn't kill Restoration. Yeah, Infernal Titan doesn't really even affect the board right now. You know, you've 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 done your game plan. You've done exactly what you wanted to do. Right. You've gotten a nine mana. You can conceivably resolve it through your ma through a mana leak. And what does it even do? Well, Acidic Slime gets in for two. So he's tapping his land. And All right, Prime Evil Titan. Titan. Okay. Dion Sanders. <laughs> Prime time. It's going to be... That, that's going to resolve. Now, if you'll notice, if, um, if Josh does have Sword of Feast and Famine, which I'm pretty sure he does, John's been pretty careful to leaving Cloth Axis up. Not take a hit from it. And so looks like he gets a Nexus as one of his lands. A second land is a Keswick Wolf run, so... I think I'm okay with that particular Primeval Titan. Um, you know, you want to do your best when you're playing this deck to, gl to Glimmer Post in even numbers. You know, so that time he could have gotten a Glimmer Post number two so that he can get three and four at an adequate time. Um, but I think for the particular scenario that we're in, I think that's okay. All right, so let's see what Josh has. Number three. Restoration Angel number three. And, uh... Two turn clock. Yep. Yep. Swing. Looks like Ink Moth. Nexus wants to chump block, leaving an angel slightly smaller than the other two. So he's going to go to six. Still a two that, turn clock. You know? I know that Josh has dismembered his hand. Um... It's actually not going it, to... It, it is and it isn't a two-turn clock, just because he has another Nexus in play, mm. so his Nexus would block one of the three, four ones. Right. And he'd take five down to one. Oh, good call. So what looks like is going to happen here is... John might actually be able to win this game, because we're going to... He's going to post up now. So glimmer post, glimmer post. Oh, drops a Inferno Titan. You don't Titan get a third land. <laughs> and you certainly don't get a Primeval Titan when you attack with that. Or I would never stop playing this game. <laughs> when you attack with Primeval Titan, search your library for a card named Primeval Titan and put it into play. Yeah, and two lands. It's yeah. no big deal. So if I can... I, I'd like to get... I'd love to get an idea. Okay, so he has Inferno Titan. And yeah, that can kill the other angel there. Now this is interesting because, okay, he let that resolve. So Josh has mana leak in his hand. And if he leaks it, John really is in no position to pay for it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because he can't activate the Ink Moth Nexus if he, uh, if he taps out. So I'm not sure if he confirmed that Inferno Titan is in play or not yet. But if he leaks it, he can't afford to pay it, and, and then... Actually, that's not true. It's not because he's a 12, but he's not a 6 anymore. Oh, yeah, that's I mean... That's not true. He's, he wouldn't be dead, yeah. but, I mean, he can't block. I was thinking that if he leaked it, he'd be... And he'd, he'd right, be that would be game, yeah. right. But that's why Glimmer Post is oh so, oh so delicious. All right, happily pays. So... Mana leak, John bye -bye pays, Restoration Angel. kills the smaller angel with the uh, Inferno Titan. So it looks like to me, it's going to be pretty important for uh, for Josh to draw a Vapor Snag here. So what does he have? I see. A, I think I saw a Snapcaster. There's a probe. It's going to pay for probe with mana. 
Show me what you got. Sphere of the Suns. That's it. All right, draw, draw for probe. Sees a card that we can't. He hit that one well. Jeez. Yeah. Josh doing some, uh, looks like doing some, maybe some math there, tapping his fingers on the board. <laughs> uh, I, I, can, see a, I see a gut shot, and I'm almost positive there's this member there as well. I'm trying to, trying to make sure he can live long enough to kill John. Well, see, that attack for three, I mean, I understand that, you know, he has to do something, but that attack for three doesn't really do very much when he's got another glimmer post in his deck, just to kind of negate the attack. He's yeah. Gonna, he's going to gain four life to go to right. 13. So, I actually think that John has. Right now, it looks as though he's going to win. Yeah, this he's got a wolf. Josh on, doesn't seem. Yeah, he's got a wolf on underneath there. He's got an infernal titan trigger and a primeval titan trigger coming. Yeah, oddly, Josh drew all the restoration angels, well, three of the four, and really not much else. When you think about the way this game went, it was like Geist traded for Whip Flare, and then it's been all angels. Yeah, like a mana leak and a probe. Not very representative of the deck. Yeah, I, I would agree. No snags, no ponders, no... Uh, yep. He has a snapcaster, but it's been useless. So John Wallace takes game one on the back of a pair of titans and a triple glimmer post to keep him out of, uh, out of range of Josh's restoration angels. So what do you see? Uh, what do you see Josh boarding in here? All right, Josh has four Phantasmal Image. I can absolutely see those coming in. Two Ghost Quarter, same thing. I think that's kind of the plan here. You go Phantasmal Image, you can copy t Titans, get Ghost Quarters to take out whatever. Most likely Wolf Run, but obviously Ink Moth can be relevant as a blocker too. The same with Cavern of Souls too. Right, or Cavern of Souls. Um, He's got uh, he's got div a divine offering, which is a uh, nice nice way to take care of a sphere of the suns. Not necessarily a hardcore like grab it, you know, definitely put it in. But I don't, he's got a I, I could see him bringing a divine offering. He's got the consecrated sphinxes. Yeah, see those, those are coming in. Coming in. Um, yeah, so I think that's the main stuff. Maybe a mass of components. I'm not even. I'm not sure about a master components as much just because I'm not even totally clear on what it's for. It doesn't it doesn't ever seem terrible, but it doesn't ever seem It's just kind great. of it's when just you like an extra way to gain some card advantage. Yeah, it's just right? kind of the kind of card that just brings everything together. It yeah. Just take you through the mid game to the late game to your sphinxes, you know, to your equipment that sort of thing. Um, on John's side, I see I see two beasts with into the sideboard. A lot of people have talked about how that, you know, we talked about that today, how it kind of mm -hmm. takes care of Restoration Angel in not, in, in not really a profitable way, mm -hmm. but it gets the job done. So I could see bringing those in. Um, I see a natural end, and a lot of people know that, that these guys have access to Sword of Feast and Famine. So I could see, I could very easily see them bringing that in. I see two Ancient Grudges that I could see them bringing in as well. Um, he also has three Cavern of Souls which are presumably going to come in. And then I see a Whip Flare and a Bonfire the Damned. And I don't like Bonfire in this matchup at all. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with Whip Flare coming in. Mm -hmm. um, takes care of all threats except for Restoration Angel. And if the goal is to trade one for one still, uh, which was what I had noticed when I was testing the deck a lot, um, that's just another way to take care of guys the same trap. You want that fifth way to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see, like, this is, this is where things really get tough for the Wolf Run player. Mm -hmm. Image is the most painful card to play against from, yeah. from the well, Wolf your, Run side. Your whole plan is, you know, dropping ridiculous threats, and if your opponent can just pay two mana to get the same thing. Yeah, pay two mana to mirror those threats and then pay one to bounce the threat and make you cast it again. Yeah. That's where things get tough. You know, that's, it's, it's, it's a pain to play against, without a doubt. But, I mean... John executed what I consider that to be the game one game plan is, you know, if you have the opportunity to play around Mana Leak, if your draw allows for you to do that, then then that's what you do. Right. And then he, he did and that he did that exactly game, that, and then, yeah. you know, he, he won. Glimmer Post kept him alive just long enough, which is typically what happens. 
and you know you're able to get your ink moss to do some chump blocking and then you have to inevitably set up with Keswick Wolfron as well yep. so everything that could possibly have gone right in mm -hmm. that game for the Wolfron player if, if I had my dream scenario of how things went, would go against Delver that's exactly what happened yeah and I mean uh, Josh was not really able to pressure John too much while he was working on getting that nine mana you know it was like he was I think John was at seven mana when Josh flashed in the first angel yeah you know so it, it was uh, wasn't too much further for John to go and restoration Angel, as good as it is against this deck uh, I don't think you know it, it doesn't do it by itself mm -hmm. you know it's part it's part of the plan right Josh is gonna keep and John is gonna mulligan now one thing that I don't think that I don't I don't want to say people don't understand, but maybe some people don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this when I started playing ramp. Is that the deck does not mulligan very well at all? Okay, you have to keep, for lack of a better term, loose hands mm -hmm. because the deck doesn't have any sorts of card drawing. You know, so you're not gonna be able to see a lot of cards a game or filter with ponders and probes and all that sort of stuff. So you have to keep some pretty mediocre to bad hands and hope that things pan out. Because once you start going to six and five, you know, then it's then it's, you know, you can't overcome the fact when you're drawing rampant gross as your draw set for the turn when you need a business spell, right. that sort of thing. So it's a deck, you know, for John, he's on the draw this game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that can kind of undo his mulligan. Yeah. But, you know, when he gets into, if he has a mulligan to six, you know, that's when you're going to get in the territory where it's like, I, I need these six cards to be pretty good because I can't afford to go to five. Yeah. Well, he's going to take a look. He's got a Pittsburgh Penguins shirt on. If he's a Steelers fan... You gonna be mad about that? Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to root for Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Josh, turn one ponder. That's his first ponder of the match. Yeah, a little selection. I see in, um, I see in John's hand, I see a Surgical Extraction. Uh, huh, I see yeah. a Rampant Growth. Yep. I, I see a red card there. I, I think it was Whip Flare? It's either Whip Flare or Slag Storm. It's, okay. it's got to be one of the Pyro I, I think it was Slag Storm. I think I said Whip Flare, even though I thought... <laughs> I was picturing Slag Storm. Sure, sure. Another Rampant Growth there. So, so long as he has a second land, and he just moved his root on Crack to the to the front. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, this hand, this hand's okay. Forest for John. And now, and and now uh, we can stop guessing. Yeah, Josh is going to show us John's hand. And we've got Double Rampant Growth, Root Mound Crag, Surgical Extraction, Slag Storm, and Green Sun Zenith. Okay. This hand's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, if I'm Josh, I'm, uh, I guess I'm okay with, doesn't, it's acceptable for John, and I think it's acceptable for Josh, like he's not super scared of what's, what's coming. Yeah. He's I don't got think, some time. Yeah, I, I, I think that pretty much addresses it perfectly. He's not super scared of what's coming, but. You know, there's some things coming on here. He, yeah. He just drew a Solemn, which is a really good draw step. He's got to draw. It's really important that he draws his fourth land on time here and have it not be a Copper Line Gorge, but the way that Solemn's going to be able to turn this game is actually pretty important. So, rampant growth from John. Gets a mountain. So now he's got access to a Slag Storm. He's going to be able to. He's going to. He can pretty much cast all the spells, but right now, what's going to happen is. If he draws the if he draws the fourth land, you know, Solemn may or may not resolve. But if he doesn't draw the fourth land and he has to catch Rampant Growth for a land, that might spark something from Josh to go, okay, I'm gonna leak that. You yeah. know? And then that might be a situation where he burns a leak where he would not otherwise maybe. Right. Alright, Josh. Draws for the turn, plays Glacial Fortress, passes back. John looks at his top card looking for a miracle, and it is an Ink Moth Nexus. <laughs> so that was the miracle that he wanted. Yeah. Solemn. And Solemn Simulacrum. So does Josh have an answer for that? Seems to be considering a Mana Leak. He slid something forward. That's okay. Well, that's a resolve. Alright. So now he's going to be able to start chipping away. Now, depending on what John's draw step is next turn, you know, ideally, in a, in a perfect world, he would just, you know, Green Sun Zenith for Hunt Master of the Fells, start to get his attack on, maybe, you know, put some onus on Josh to 
flip it, not flip it, that sort of thing. Right. And you know, if, and if he doesn't want to do that, he elects not to do that, and he can ramp it real safely through a mana leak, so. It all depends on what his draw step is, but the, the nice thing here for John is that he has options. Whereas for Josh, we, we don't really have a very good look at his hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw anything, really. I haven't been able to see what he's got. He's kind of got his hand in the shadow, too. Like, it must be, the lighting must not be that great on that side, because I'm noticing how much better we're always seeing the, the yeah. guy on the right. But I, I, I think I saw a Restoration Angel over there, but image is, okay. So, Josh uh, uses Phantasmal Image to copy John's Solemn Simulacrum. Josh getting... Presumably, well, he could go Plains or Island here. Probably Island. Yeah, goes Island. Oh, that makes me. That makes me think that maybe he's got another image in the holster. Yeah, me too. Because wasting, well, not wasting an image, but using one of your images on something like Solid and Delacrum when you know that there are bigger things to copy uh, on the way. Yeah, I think. I think that's a fair assumption. How do we do for our draw stuff? Batter skull. Oh, a batter skull. And he's on five mana, so he could certainly um, attempt it. That would certainly draw out the mana leak if it's there. So John decides he wants to. Uh, looks like he decides he wants to save the batter skull for. He just wants to play something that can slide through mana leak. Yeah, he wants to save that batter skull for when he can more likely resolve it. That's interesting because if you're on John's side, if you're on John's side, and I guess you can you can play Josh. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh, when, when John cast Silent Simulacro, mm -hmm. Josh definitely thought about it for a little while. Yeah. Um, kind of moved some cards around in his hand. Mm -hmm. And then said, okay, that's fine. And even for both of us, we're not 100% positive if he has Leak in his hand. Mm -hmm. So for John, you know, John draws Batter Skull. He has five mana. He also has Green Sun to get Hunmaster in the phones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you run one of these spells into Mana Leak or do you try to keep playing around it? Because the more that you try to play around Mana Leak, the more it opens up for Josh just to sit there mm -hmm. and then do the Restoration Angel game. Right. You know, play all of these games that lean into Delver's favor. Yeah. Now, what John, what John could have done is, you know, if he wanted to know that information, he could have very easily just surgical extraction something. Yeah, and then he could have seen the hand. Yeah, and to then get just, a good idea of what his hand is. Yeah. Using surgical extraction as kind of a, a, a probe. So Ink Moth Nexus looks like it's uh, bringing the infected beats here. And it gets a Vapor Snag. That's not a big deal at all. And I, truthfully, I'm not like, a, I'm not a big fan of that play. And the reason why is because... Oh, look at that, Extraction for Vapor Snag. Now, he's, now he's gonna get the information. So there's a couple, there's a couple things I'm gonna go back and forth on here really quickly for you. So, John attack, John hadn't played a land that turn. Mm -hmm. So, by bouncing that, he gets to replay his land, so it's not really a loss for John. Yeah. But at the, uh, on the flip side, if you're gonna Surgical Extraction his Vapor Snags, mm -hmm. you know, if, you're gonna wanna do it on either Josh's draw step, so if he catches a favorite snag in his draw step, you can get it. Mm -hmm. Or on his turn, so he can get information, so that he can safely cast a batter spell. So I I love John's attack, mm -hmm. because, but you don't like the follow up. Yeah, but I don't like I don't like the, the timing of the extraction. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Okay, that makes sense to you. Yes, definitely. Although I do have to say, it looks like not having access to vapor snag is pretty rough. I think. It Josh. definitely makes a difference. I, I mean, and if you look at Josh's hand, you're going to see two Restoration Angels, a Dismember, and an Image. So we were right about him having a second Image. And I was pretty sure he had one Restoration Angel. I didn't know that he had Dismember. But now it gets, you know, not for John. John's just going to slam Batter Skull next turn. Yeah, presumably. there's no you know, Mana Leak. There's no reason for him not to. You know, if he drew a Mana Leak, so be it. Mm -hmm. But now he's just going to slam it into play. And, and looking at Josh's hand, he has no, very, he has no good answer for it. You know, image yeah. doesn't do anything against it. And Restoration Angel was pretty dead. I mean, yeah, he could dismember the token, I, mm -hmm. I suppose. But Adrian, Adrian Sullivan, Sullivan here giving me a big high five. <laughs> he is happy to see my smiling face. And, and rocker fingers. What are they called? What are they called? <laughs> That's Devil not horns. the term. Devil horns. That's it. Look, I listen to so much Carly Rae Jepsen. I don't know what they call these things nowadays. <laughs> What do we draw this turn? It looks like another image. 
so now that now that John has all this information about like what Josh has, mm -hmm. you know, I you know uh, a, a play that he had access to was was Grand San Jose for Huntmaster. Mm -hmm. Looks a lot worse now. Yeah, you know. It's, it doesn't seem like a very good option anymore. Batter Skull right? seems fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Batter it, It's going to be good. I think it's going to be slow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to. It could eat four life from Josh and his dismember, right? And then he would just maybe bounce and replay it. You know what I mean? Um, it would be slow, but he seems fairly safe from mana leaks. So obviously, if the first one resolves, uh, or if the Batter Skull resolves initially. You know, it, it's basically Josh will have like one draw step to draw another mana leak. Yeah. So he's going to get in first two. And yeah, I think we all, yeah, we yeah. pretty much knew that this was going to happen. And as, as good as a turn as this might seem like it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, I, or what I predict is going to happen here is, you know, he's going to put the token in play. It's going to get this number. Josh is going to go down to, Josh is going to go down to 14 and he's going right. to put a Restoration Angel on the play as well. And so now, you know, he can commence the attacks now at the same time. What's also going to happen on the other side of things now is I think that John is going to be able to make, be able to equip his Solemn. Okay. I guess he doesn't have to dismember right away. He can mm. dismember on the attack. So, you know, it doesn't make him nearly as good of a play. So. Ronnie Rittner, if you're in the room, please come see me up here at the stage. Ronnie Rittner, if you're in the room, please come see me at the stage. So that attack's gonna happen, and maybe he just chumps blocks. Maybe he just chump blocks with his Phantasmal image. You know, that that's also an option. I, I don't think that's what he's gonna do, but right, it's it's a line of play. Yeah, gets a card off it. All right, everybody in. I mean, and he can even open it up to something as unique as block with Phantasmal image, mm -hmm. play Restoration Angel, target Phantasmal image with ability, so that. Image dies. He draws a card from the solemn copy, and there's no life. And link. there's no life link. So this is what makes the Delver deck so interesting. They have a ton of options and, and tools. So okay. declares the image as a blocker. Looks like he's going with that. Okay. Restoration Angel. Target the image. Image upon being targeted just. It's destroyed. It doesn't yep. really matter. Like you can respond, I guess, but it's, so it's destroyed. Draw a card. There's no life link. Josh takes two. He's going to go to 16. He still has that batter skull very much under control. Now John has Primeval Titan, but Josh still has mana leak mana up, and now has. Drawn, I believe, two cards that John. Yeah, Josh has. Manly Man up has drawn two cards that John hasn't seen. I think yeah. I said John and Josh and mixed the names up <laughs> yeah. at some point. So Start now calling it looks Josh. Like he's going to go get Huntmaster of the Fells. And so this was the thing that I kind of talked about earlier. This is the thing I was kind of afraid of because I don't think that this is a very good card given the situation. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember precisely if he knew about the second image from the Surgical Extraction. I don't think he does. I think his hand at, at, the hand at, at the time of Surgical Extraction it was image. To Restoration Angels and Dismember. Okay? Uh -huh. So, you know, this just opens, you know, he can copy, he can image his his Hunt Master. He still has Batter Skull under control with the Dismember in his hand, and then we're not exactly sure what the other cards are in his hand. But, you know, I don't think that Hunt Master really has a positive effect on the game. And if you're not going to play around Mana Lake anyway, mm -hmm. you might as well just put a Titan into play. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, he has two images in his hand. Why leave the lone ink moth as your only untapped land? I'm not sure, and that, uh, that's the second turn he's done that. Yeah, that's why I brought it up because I saw it a turn ago, or you know, a couple turns ago, and it's like you, you, you can activate it and then not block with it. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't I, get I'm, it. Leaving a mountain up at least gives them the idea or the thought of galvanic blast. Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't really do very much right now, at least there's the thought of it in your head. Of like leaving red. Yeah. Up, so, yeah, or, like leaving or even the dual land. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I assumed he would like. Unless you need to tap the dual land, why not leave that on tap? So, um, that was a probe. Probe. And what we saw was I, we saw Verdian emissary, um, Slag Storm, and Primeval Titan. Yeah. We 
we need what you can. And so we don't have All right, so in for our six. show director, she's helping us out a little bit here. Yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble with but, the uh, monitor. Um, in for six with Restoration Angels is going to put them down to, it looks like, eight life, I believe. Yeah, it should. Okay. The color. Why don't we? Okay. And, and then we have, like, a loose cord, right? He's imaging so many things. Yep. So he imaged. Oh no, that's a Delver, and then I believe he imaged. I believe his image was a uh, was a restoration angel. Yep. So he's an eight. He has nine points of flying in the air. He has nine points of flying in the air. He has to remember to take care of that batter skull still open still. So there's still going to be no life link. And now John is the one that has the decisions to make. Because not a lot of things can happen. Yeah. You know, now it's do I do I play a spell? You know, do I play right? A spell do I want master? my huntmaster to flip or but, not? You know, does does John remember that he has dismember, so he's actually in no control of that? You know, now now it's, now that's going to get dismembered. Yep. Okay. Dismember your germ. Well, he does know that he does know that he's going to be able to resolve crime evil type. And with being able to do that, he can get post post, mm -hmm. go up to twelve, and hope that Delver doesn't flip to kill him. But that's not the best thing to be hoping for when half their deck is. Yeah. In instance, it's not it's not a comfortable spot to be in. I mean, John's just sitting here like us. He's got to figure out what his line of play is going to be now. And if he makes it to the next turn, depending on what Josh's hand is, I think that he can. He has a very good shot to win the game because then an equipment of batter skull is going to happen, and then some things will some know, some likely happen. Likely. Some things yeah. will change. But he's got to make it to that next turn. He needs that Delver not to flip. Um, you know, if he would have drawn a wolf from this turn, he could have activated it to target the image, something like that. Rampant growth. Man, not going with the Titan plan. I liked your Titan plan better because that could get him. That gets him uh, out of range. If the Delver doesn't flip. Yeah. I mean, he's on the. He, he's he's at twelve, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just trying to analyze the the position on. You know, he needs Delver not to flip anyway. Right. Okay? He needs Delver not to flip no matter what. Ponder. All right, so he has he does have Ink Moth to block, yep. but he is going to take nine if he can't doesn't have another answer. That's and Josh knows his hand. He knows it's like some. John has no answer. I, you can see it's just like yeah, some. Right, we know his hand. There's, I can't think of. I'm just looking. I don't see anything that John can do. Yeah, yep. they're going to game three. Yeah, if you're gonna cast if, if you're gonna cast a spell and hope that and hope that Delver doesn't flip, it might as well be Primeval Titan. You're not playing around rapid growth anymore at that point. So I think at that point, you know, it's just kind of a John needed to step back for a minute mm -hmm. and kind of analyze the board. Yeah, and see exactly. Okay, you know, what what avenue do I need to take to be able to win this game? What is what problems are facing me? You know, what areas of the game do I need to get lucky, or the areas that I can control? So with the sideboard of games, uh, I mean, it looks like Josh is going back to the... Uh, no, I think he's just shuffling. I don't think he's going back to the well, actually. Yeah, it feels to me like... I mean, the way I see it, the current iteration of Delver, as Josh is playing it, was built as almost its public enemy number one being the Wolf Run deck, beyond mirror matches, obviously. But, like, it, it was built to say, all right, here's 
here's our toughest matchup, or you know, the, our most likely uh, contender is Wolfron. Let's build a deck to beat Wolfron. So it's just like that's what it's built to do, and well, it's it's on Wolfron to adjust. And uh, I just don't I don't know that I see it in John's list. I don't see anything in particular that seems uh, seems to really trump the Delver list. Yeah, any, any, basically anything that's going like, you know, this is here for this matchup. Yeah. You know, there's not a card that stands out like, you know, some people are playing Crushing Vines, mm -hmm. some people are playing Combust. There's nothing there that's just going, yep, this is what exactly I'm here to do. It'll be interesting to see what happens this game, because I, 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 you know, I, this is a game that I want to review, you know, later when I get back home. That sort of thing, and see if there was an avenue that John could have taken to win. Um, but I know that the one turn that he Huntmastered instead of that he green something for Huntmaster instead of getting uh, instead of just casting Titan because he was scared of Mana Leak. But we, as, as I said, if you're gonna if you're gonna run into Mana Leak, it might as well be your better spell at that point. So I think if he would have casted that turn, he would have mm -hmm. gained. He would have gained four life off of Glimmer Posts, assuming that he searches for him. Right. And then his Titan is still in play. It would have never gone away. And then some other things would have happened. Game would have been entirely different. So. This is interesting. Uh, several people on Twitter mentioning this. And this is a rule, like a, a, an interaction that I wasn't aware of. A lot of people are saying that the Restoration Angel, the, the first one that was cast when the only legal target was a Phantasmal Image, Apparently, the ability is a may, but the targeting part is a must. Like, you have to target it, but you you don't have to exile it. You don't have to it. use the ability? Right. Like So I'm looking at Restoration Angel. It just says, you may exile target non-angel creature you control. So, hmm. yeah, that, that's interesting. That's not something that um, that, I've, that I was aware of, if that's true. Okay. So basically, if you have Phantasmal Image in play and you cast Restoration Angel, apparently you... I, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but this is what what Twitter is saying. Several people on Twitter have said is that it has to target the Phantasmal Image. And, uh, and of course, upon doing that, the Phantasmal Image dies. Okay. So that's nice. Uh, well, that's that's a very very much a nombo, right? That's a pretty yes. bad interaction for uh, for a Delver player to to have to have to have to kind of work around. And now, um, now that now that we have Restoration Angel in front of oh, us, oh, we'll and, talk about and that the game, yeah. So it looks like a turn one probe from Josh sees Surgical Extraction, Forest, Verdian Emissary, Beast uh, Within, and uh, Green Sun Zenith. I do not like John's hand. Emissary, uh, Verdian Emissary is one of one of the cards I, I hate more than anything because it never does what you want it to do. There it is. You know, it's never gonna. It, it's up to Josh now if he wants that to get a land. Yeah. You know? Whereas John needs that to be a land. It does make for awkward situations, though. Like, I know playing against it, it's like... Normally, I'm like, oh, I mean, you know, maybe I'll take a couple hits, maybe I'll just kill it. But it's like, I don't want to kill it. It makes it real awkward for, like, Josh doesn't want to kill it. Although, Josh doesn't have that many kill spells. What's he going to dismember it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he, John has this, this this crazy option where he can beast within it, upgrade it, and get a land. That's true. I mean, that's a thing. He could do that. Yeah. It makes it forces Josh to do something on his turn if he wants to let it happen. So. So so far, no no more plays from Josh other than that probe. Two more. Emissary gets in. John just rattling off lands here. So, you know, he only had two lands to start. He's gonna bounce that. Okay, Vapor Snag, your emissary. Now Josh can be beast within yeah. here. No? no, he's just okay. and he, he, John, quick. He's like every time you Vapor Snag, come on, buddy. I am gonna surgically wait till that draw step. Wait till that draw step. Get your value. Apparently, uh, on Moto, that 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 interaction on Moto, you have to choose a target if there is one, and then you choose yes or no to using it. Okay, so that's interesting. And the other thing that I was going to bring up, um, as as John is going through the deck here, yeah, we can to get those out. Talk um, about this a little bit. When we were talking about during uh, Christian Wentz's match with Restoration Angel and Gideon, mm -hmm. Restoration Angel to Gideon to, block, to mm -hmm. stop the Doom Blade, it's only target creature with Restoration Angel. 
not yeah, an angel creature, so you can't do a planeswalker. Right, but it just but Gideon would have been a creature. Oh, right. That's you're right. Mean. You're right. Okay, <laughs> you win again. All right. Never mind. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that too. I'm like, there's not some weird wording that this doesn't no work. No wonder right? no one on Twitter said that was wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes, Joey. Yes. <laughs> All right. So ponder from Josh. So it's kind of interesting to see here. Josh is uh, behind's not the word I want to use, but he's not he's not really doing very much. Yeah, I don't love what he's doing. I, mean, I guess he's just gotta gotta set things up for himself if he doesn't have any action. So John, Viridian emissary. He's back again. Yeah, looks a little familiar because he's the same one we saw. And the only one in his game. deck. And that one's gonna get leaked. And he drew Bonfire of the Damned. Which, if you know anything about me, there's not a card I hate more in ramp. Well, we will <laughs> talk, we'll talk about that after this match, Yeah, I I'd promise. like to hear a little more about yeah. that. Yeah. People seem to love that card. To $25 worth. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of shocked me when I saw it. You and me both, partner. Six lands. Ghost Quarter. Old school Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter is going to keep Cavern in check. Amass the Compost. Now this is what they want to be doing after side view. Nice. Okay. So draw three, put one on the bottom. You know, this is, this is exactly what the Delver deck wants to accomplish. Because he's casting Amass the Components on an empty board. Yeah. You know, there's, he's, now he's, he's setting everything up the way he wants it. You know, what's the most threatening thing that John can do this turn? Like Lamb Primeval Titan? I'm, I'm sure he's very ready for that. Now that's pretty good. So Beast Within on uh, on Josh's Seachrome Coast is uh, currently on the stack. This is at the end of Josh's turn, I believe. We are getting confirmation from Matt Braddock, who is a judge, uh, saying that is how it works. With the Restoration Angel and Phantasm yeah. Image. Yeah, so that's just something that wasn't caught there. Can't back up into the game, <laughs> into the, the earlier game. So the thing about this Beast Within is, this is typically, you know, something that, this is a trick that a lot of people use. You got some blue decks. You, should, you Beast Within the thing when they only have two mana up, mm -hmm. so be able to get a spell through mana leak, okay? But what what's going to make this a little bit worse is that Josh has some acid components. Mm -hmm. So whatever John's going to do now, Josh is probably prepared for it. So the fact that he can't mana leak the Titan that maybe John's going to cast, mm -hmm. well, it doesn't matter because he's probably got a Phantasmal image, or you know something to the effect of right, he's like, just drawn three cards. Yeah, it's just something that I don't. I don't. He got rid of a card that do. he probably wasn't using. You know. Yeah. So, Inferno Titan, kill the beast. Okay. So you stone rained me. You stone rained me, and you have a six six that otherwise did nothing because you just. Now, Inferno Titan was the better of the two Titans that he could play, for, without a doubt. Mm. So we're gonna have to see what Josh can do because. He doesn't have any snags in his deck. That's right. Now, so. Ponder sees, looked like Land Delver something. It didn't quite catch the last card, but it didn't look that impressive. Yeah, he shuffled it away fast. And Delver's not very impressive when they the other has got <laughs> Inferno Titan. The other thing here is that Inferno Titan was actually like, you know, probably the best thing he could do because, like, it kind of trumps the image plan. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take two images now to kind of be relevant. Because there are no Vapor Snacks to save Josh in this situation. So, uh, Ponder shuffled them, shuffled uh, those cards away. Josh drew something we couldn't quite see. And now, looks like three Stack. mana, not a Geist, because that's, uh, there's no white. Well, he's got, he's got two mana tap, one for the Ponder. Oh, you're right, I'm yeah. sorry. So it's Snapcaster Ponder. Yeah. Sorry so about now that. he's gonna cast Ponder again. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, I think I know what he's looking for. He's looking for images or, you know, looking at his list. Uh, and there's nothing like an O-ring here. There's no Oblivion ring or anything. So the way that this game is, is looking right now to me, mm -hmm. Josh is in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Looks like he can't, he has no way to bounce the, the Titan. Uh, and no way to really kill it. Like, he just needs to be able to image it. And, um... can't do that without the actual images. Now, he's got only access to five mana, and I think he's got a Consecrated Sphinx in hand. 
There's the sixth land, which naming Sphinx. I mean, you can name anything, really. I guess whatever he feels like uh, he may need the color for. Yeah, he's in some he's in some serious trouble. Because not only not only does image do nothing, but it, it takes two images to kill the Titan. Because the Titan will just kill the first image with its ability. Mm -hmm. So it, it's either two images or no images now. And he's going to well, pop some into the Titan. So Titan killed the uh, the Snapcaster, dealt two to Josh, and now is getting in for looks like nine. Yeah. Putting Josh to three. It's an interesting. I believe. It's an interesting strategy that John's taken because even though I don't like the timing of his surgical extractions on Vapor Snag. To be able to know right now that if he does not have to play around Vapor Snag the rest of the game, mm -hmm. little no fear of it. So you know, if he wants to pump in Inferno Titan, you know, if he could Vapor Snag it, if Josh had Vapor Snag, he could pick it up, and then he's like, oh, I can't recast my Inferno Titan this turn. But he doesn't have to even worry about that. He's just like, yeah, I can just drain all my red into it, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. You know, the best that you can do is block, is flash in the Snapcaster Mage now and jump block, and I don't care about that. Yeah. So it looks like. Uh there was some backing up a little bit. I think Josh may have wanted to respond, but then didn't do anything. So I think Inferno Titan ended up getting in for just eight, which should put Josh to four, because he took two already from the Titan, from its attack trigger. Yeah, six, seven, yeah, it's gonna put him to four. Snapcaster just gets into play. So that was what the thinking was about. Maybe, ch maybe he was considering the chump block. Josh has one image. He is desperate to find another one. Here comes a Consecrated, Consecrated Sphinx. Sphinx. What do you think was the uh, the logic between him just flashing in Snapcaster at the end of turn for, for no value? And, uh, I mean, is he really trying to go that aggressive? Is he trying to use that Snapcaster as aggression? Because... That's a good question. It's I would have I would have thought it would have been better to, to flash it in and block. That's a good question. You know, that saves... Eight damage. That's pretty big. It's a pretty <laughs> two thirds of your life total. Yeah, Bonfire is going to finish this one off. And he's going to put the damage upstairs as well. Yeah. So Bonfire and Inferno Titan burning Josh Cho okay, to a crisp and his first loss of the day. So yep. he is now three one. Delver now.